the room. It was pretty disgusting. How did he behave with her? How did he react with her when he brought her in? Was she chained up, tied up? No, she didn't have chains or anything on her. The only one that did was me, and he made me cover it before she came in the room. So how long after you saw on the television that the girl had been taken, how long between there and when he brought her in your room? Weeks. Weeks. What happened when he brought her in the room? He said, all right, this is my brother's girlfriend. Was she crying? Was she? No, she smiled at me because I think she was happy to see that there was another person there and it wasn't just her, she wasn't alone. Did she look beat up or anything? No. Was she clean? I didn't see any dirt or anything. Like on my legs, you would have seen black dirt. She looked like she wanted to cry though, but she didn't cry. How long was it before you saw her again? A long while. Was it like several days or several weeks? I think it was more than like these months. Months before you see her again? Yeah. So he, he brings her? He brings me in the room. Basically, I was embarrassed to walk in the room because I was fully naked. And I didn't want to walk in front of her being naked. And he was like, well, she got the same thing you have. You can come in the room. This We're going to go. Whose room? There, his Amanda's. Room? Amanda's. This room. is when I finally got to see where she was at. We're sitting there. We're talking. And um, she told me that I think I remember you from school. I was like, yeah, I remember you. Was she chained? I didn't see the chain until she like moved her leg because it was around her ankle. But she was chained? Mm-hmm. Did you talk to her then? Were you ever alone? No, never alone. At that point, at least? Always with him. So how often in, in these ensuing months did you see Amanda? Don't miss Cole's friends and family sale. Take an extra 20%. So how often in these ensuing months did you see Amanda? Not that often. And when we did, it was like a quick hug and bye because he wouldn't let us stay in the same room for that long. And when he would leave for work, did you two yell out to each other? No, we weren't allowed. If I'm pretty sure if we did, we would have got in trouble. So you, you didn't know if he was there or gone or? But if her mom was on TV or something, I would blast my TV so she can hear me, so she can turn on hers. And then I'll quickly turn it down because you never know when, you, when he's there. And if you do something wrong, if you do something to find, then you're going to get hurt. How many times did you see her during that first year? Maybe six or seven times. And sometimes she would cry and I'll tell her everything will be okay. And that one day we'll get home. We just have to, you know, wait it out. We've only just begun to scratch the surface of what took place inside that house that once stood at 2207 Seymour Avenue. Tomorrow, Michelle reveals the moment she knew Castro had added a third young girl, 14-year-old Gina De Jesus, to his prison. Tomorrow on Dr. Bill. I had to help him drill holes in a wall to put the chains through to hook us together. He was forcing you to prepare a torture chamber for a new victim. In the basement. All I could hear is a girl screaming. Get off of me. And he tells me I hate you because I can abuse you and nobody will care. The stories no one has heard. He had you digging back here. Was this a grave? From Ariel Castro's House of Horrors. Gina picks me up and so her arms. I begged her to let me die. That's tomorrow. If you've been touched by Michelle Knight's story and you want to make a donation for her future, go to drphil.com. The Dr. Phil Foundation is setting up a donation fund for Michelle, and we are starting her off with a substantial donation.